Hello everyone, this is Scott here, back with another KSP Shorty. Yes, a Shorty. In this episode, I'm looking at intake scoops, atmospheric intake scoops. We're going to build an SSTO that's going to go into the atmospheres of every planet in the Kerbal system that uh, has an atmosphere, and we'll see what kind of products we can pull out of it. Now, this is a little disclaimer here. I am going to be cheating. I'm going to be modifying the save file just so that I can get this episode out a little bit quicker. But ultimately, this is our SSTO, and as you can see, it's got some intake scoops in the front. I've got various fuel cans, like a methane can, standard fuel oxidizer, and I've also got an inline refinery because that allows us to carry several other small products that, uh, or my soup products that we might find. Now, first things first, we're going to be in Kerbal, so we're going to grab Kerbal Atmosphere. As you can see, I've emptied a lot of the, the cans, and I've got the uh, resources in the top right there. But as you can see, we, free, we go through the products one by one. As you can find, oxygen, when you collect it with this air scoops, can be converted directly into oxidizer. That's awesome. Now, methane, there is small trace methanes, and there's small traces of hydrogen as well that you can pull from this atmosphere, but the most abundant one is oxidizer. So if you need to get oxidizer for whatever reason, you can just carry an intake scoop with you. And the other nice thing that we're using with this STO is I've got the uh, particle reactors, the antimatter reactors, using thermo turbo jets so they can work like SSTOs, and they can burn most of the fuels that uh, we'll come across with here in this as well, as you can see, flipping from uh, intake to liquid fuel shortly here, just so that I can get out into the atmosphere. Now there was one other resource we could get out of Kerbin that I missed and I didn't bring a container for, and that was Argon. However, Argon is the only fuel in the Interstellar mod that I'm aware of that will only work with plasma engines. So we're coming in on Duna here right away. Now this has got a very thin atmosphere, so we have to get fairly close to the ground to really get anything out of it. However, um, we've got a couple of products. One of the most abundant products in this one is carbon dioxide. Now carbon dioxide on its own is useless to us. We can't actually burn that. However, if you look at my inline refinery, there's a process on there. This process is called Begin Saboteur ISRU. Now, I hope I pronounced that correctly, but in any case, what that process does is it collects carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and converts it into methane and oxidizer. Or as you can see, I was trying, but I wasn't low enough. But at this point, I turn it on, and now my um, I'm developing, I'm collecting methane and oxidizer out of the atmosphere directly. So that's kind of cool. Um, so you can still make fuel out of uh, Duna's atmosphere if you bring along one of the refineries. And the other um, refinery as well, the one that's not in line, the Grand Giant Dome really, will work too for this process, which is actually kind of cool. Now we're gonna, there's not too much else on Duna for us to collect in terms of atmosphere. So we're gonna move on here shortly and I'm gonna head out to Eve. Now, if some of you guys might have noticed, a little design feature that I put on this plane is that I've actually got my antimatter container on top and fuel lines carrying it to the reactors. That does work, which is actually kind of cool. So now we're coming in on EVE here pretty quick, as you can see. Now EVE's atmosphere is incredibly thick and the gravity is also very dense, so this is uh, it's going to slow this ship down quite a bit and pulling a vehicle out of EVE is probably one of the biggest challenges in the game. If some of you remember from the last shorty I did where I was dealing with the reactors, I, I almost got off of EVE with one, but I popped the thermal turbo jet, it overheated. Uh, I figured out why that was, and if you look in the uh, this thing, behind the B9 intakes, there's a intercooler, and that actually will prevent your engines from overheating, regardless of how fast they're going, which is also kind of cool. So anyway, we get down to uh, EVE, and we're coming down to its surface. We're going to be using the same saboteur process that we used on Duna, however, the nice thing about EVE is... Uh, you can do it a lot lower in the atmosphere. I think you can actually start doing it from about 50 kilometers off the surface is where I found you could actually start doing that. Anyway, but again, this is actually kind of slow because the atmosphere is so thick. I've got to maintain enough speed so that um, this SSTO doesn't basically stall out and start falling. <laughs> yeah, EVE is really thick. I found that out when I was trying to. And the other thing about this is when you're using atmosphere in your engines, um, they don't shut off and shut on immediately. It's not like you can just hit X and kill your throttle. You hit X and then your engines throttle down. And then it's the same if you accelerate. They take a while to throttle up. So EVE is a little bit of a tricky thing to take a plane to. However, it is a lot of fun. I recommend it if you get the opportunity. Now we're just uh, basically pulling out of the atmosphere here, as you can see. I'm gunning it to get out. 
and are going to need a lot of energy. Fortunately, I can use a lot of the atmosphere to give me the initial push to get me out of the atmosphere, and the uh, combination of two two uh, antimatter reactors with thermal turbojets is more than enough energy to push this SSTO out of EVE. Now, I thought about landing it and then taking off again, but I ultimately thought, well, this is a shorty about air scoops, it's not about SSTOs to EVE, so we're going to push out here and we're going to continue on forward, because next stop is going to be Jewel, and Jewel actually has some of the more interesting things you can pull out of the atmosphere directly, which is actually really sweet. So just moving on forward here, I'm just going to finish my last little push out of the EVE so that I get enough, and then we modify the save file and come into Jewel. Now, Jewel is actually pretty sweet because it's a gas giant, so its primary resource, I think, is hydrogen. Now, the interesting thing about hydrogen in this game is this is liquid fuel. If you look what I'm doing right now, collecting hydrogen is actually refueling my liquid fuel tank. You can also pick up ammonia and a couple of other products here, which are also can be used as fuels, but ammonia is much less, much smaller quantities as compared to hydrogen. So if you can get this thing to go into Jewel's atmosphere, you can refill, scoop, and then fly out. Provided, of course, you've got enough energy to pull out of the Jewel's gravity well. One other resource that came up here that I was looking at too was there's, it says that the atmosphere has helium-3 in it. Now if some of you can remember that the fission reactors can use helium-3 to generate charged particles which is almost pure electricity without much heat if any at all. And um, that's supposed to be a really good fuel, sort of energy so I went fairly low into Joule's atmosphere with this to try to pull out helium-3. However, no matter what I tried it didn't work. So I don't know if it's just not available, even though it's there, to be scooped with the air scoops, or like I brought a uh, helium-3 tank with me too, or if I didn't connect it correctly because it's a surface mount tank, and you know, that sort of thing. But you know, maybe it's something that'll be in the future mods, I don't know, we'll see as we go here, because there's some products that you just don't really use for anything right now. And we're just pulling out of Jules' atmosphere here, as you can see. Now, we're going to go to Lathe, which is pretty much like Kerbin, most of you, and truthfully, yes, you get pretty much the same kind of products here. We're coming into Lathe here. Now, this is actually a pretty, really steep uh, trajectory that I'm coming in on. I've kind of realized that at the last minute, so I tried to level out and give me some burn so that I was straighten out, but I <laughs> ended up losing a little bit of control here as we were going into the atmosphere. I was like, ah, jerk, ah. Oh, well. Um... I was like, oh, no, I'm going to go into the ocean. And then I actually managed to pull out of it, though. <laughs> we got fairly close to the, to the surface here. It's like about a 1,000 uh, meters off the ground when I straightened out. But, yeah, same products that you could find on Kerbin. Uh, thinner atmosphere, so there's a little bit less of them. However, that's, you know, still kind of interesting. You could, if some industrious person was, in, was able to, they could pull oxidizer out of lathe and fuel out of jewel and make it efficient so that you get a net gain. That'd be kind of interesting. I'm thinking about something along those lines, but I'm not sure how practical it'll be. Because ultimately, the amount of power to pull yourself out of uh, Jules' gravity well is pretty nuts. I could see pulling Oxidizer out of Lathe and ending up with a net gain if you had a good vehicle. I'm not so sure about Jewel, but it'd be interesting to try. Anyway, that's what I've got for you today for uh, KSP Shorties. I'll try to get back to my main game at some point, but it's been kind of a busy life for me lately. Anyway, this is Scott Cook signing off. You guys have a good time. We'll see you in the verse. Take care. Bye.